Podcast. Torah just means instruction in Hebrew. At Torah Talk, we will make straight the ways of Yahuwah and discuss the simple truths of Scripture so that even you can understand and get all the juicy life hidden within the pages of Yahuwah's Torah. Welcome to Torah Talk with Lou White and Mark Davidson. <laughs> Good to see you, brother. <laughs> Good to see you. Yeah. Anyway, uh, <clears throat> let's see. Uh, I'm talking into a microphone here for just in case it's not clear on my end, but can you hear me okay? I can hear you fine. Yes. Great. Should I and speak it, up? You know, I'm amazed at the, at the speed of our, you know, we can say, you know, maybe a second now. It seemed like it was longer last week. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> maybe. Well, I'm at home tonight. Uh, we didn't have as many late clients, so I'm at home. So I, it maybe it's as fast as speed at home. I don't know. That might be. Uh huh. Yeah, it might be. Yeah. Fantastic. Anyway, the um, the interview went just I thought really well last week. Um, you know, an interview, whatever you want to call it. Uh, it's a radio show, but uh, yeah. I was thinking, you know, if if you get that, if you load up your music to that radio station, then people will have music to listen to while they work or uh, on their computer, you know, whatever. Wouldn't that be good? Yeah, I love the idea. Yeah. And you could also uh, design a way to market your music if people want to download it or, or, or order the physical CDs, then they could do that, you know. And that's why I sent you that uh, link to Jazz Tracks. Yes, I've got to get to that. I didn't get a chance today. And if you were to just sort of clone those ideas and the way it looks and, you know, kind of put the albums up and yeah. song breakdowns, I know that's a lot of time. I mean, that would take somebody uh, months. But, you know, over the long haul, you know, it would be a nice target. That's a great idea. I love it. And the whole uh, Not Serene community worldwide would go, that's the place to go, you know. <laughs> and then, you could, then we could use that as a you know, uh, sort of a thread to lead back. Yeah, I love it. I um, I thought mm -hmm. uh, Amy was saying today, maybe you should put this interview on uh, YouTube because you've got a lot of followers uh, and people that know that stuff is there, whereas this Podomatic thing is new. Right. And that started me thinking, and I thought, well, I've, like when I'm recording now, it's not just recording our voice, it's recording the visual as well. So I thought... Is that so? Yeah. Well, in that case, I better put my glasses on. Uh, they'll think I'm a young man. You have to look intellectual. <laughs> I have to look intellectual. Are they straight? <laughs> That's right. Yeah, yeah. 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 Mm. All right. So I put together the interview with um, the, the the picture and uh, oh. cropped it a bit and put some radio waves in the background and stuffed around a bit. And uh, that's rendering. So that I'll put, probably put that up before Sabbath. So And people wow. can watch it. People can watch because sometimes it, yeah, it, they like to watch like the facial expressions and things. So, yeah. Yeah. Well, in just a moment. I'm gonna have to go put some pants on then. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. Yeah. Anyway, you know, uh, last week when we were speaking and you recorded it, uh, some of the bits, I uh, I was saying things because I'm it's seven o'clock here and I just basically woke up a little while ago and. Wolf Downs strawberry pancakes made by the lovely Mrs. White. Strawberry pancakes. They were delicious. And the um, thing that I remember from last week was uh, two little things. I listened to the interview, and I, I heard myself speak of the mistranslation in the King James Version about Pasach being, tra or, you know, Pascha being translated into another word. E-A-S-T-E-R. And I gave the reference that it was in uh, Acts 4.12, which I'm very familiar with, but I had transposed it in my head. It's 12.4, oh. chapter 12, verse 4. Oh, that's and disgusting. I, and then, oh, I know. And then what I was thinking was we could, in the interview every week, or in the uh, 
radio show every week, we could do a little trick on people to see if they could find the error <laughs> or two. And then we could act like we intended it to happen. Oh, clever. And they could say, well, I, I found your error. And there was another error I want to share with you. I said, I made a statement that William Tyndale was the first one to translate into English. And that's not true. John Wycliffe did it 150 something years before in the 1300s. Uh, uh, John, uh, John Wycliffe was the first one on record that we know of that actually translated from, um, you know, I think he translated from the actual Greek into, I mean, the uh, Greek translation into the English. I have to check on that though. <clears throat> but uh, I don't know if he used the Hebrew. No, I think he, he, he did the, well, I'm not really sure uh, on that technical aspect, but uh, he was the first English uh, translation. So John Wycliffe, and, and he was 150-something years before the William Tyndale translation. Ah. Well, you know, who, and that would have been one that they could have caught. Yeah, that evil Lee White, he doesn't know oh, what he's yeah, talking about. Like, oh, man. And uh, he's trying to lie and trick everyone. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, I'm a person. I'm a human being. And I uh, can't retain every single detail. But those, I mean, I remember the details when they're when I'm reminded of them. But uh, William Tyndale was somebody, I mean, John Wycliffe was one of the most interesting people to me because we speak English, you know. <clears throat> and so I had studied his uh, work. Oh, 20 years ago. I mean, I can't remember things from 20 years ago. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, when I heard myself say that, I was going, what? That can't be. Yeah, who was that? <laughs> yeah. Morning, sister. Hey, look at this. I was trying to sneak in without you seeing me. You can't sneak in in that pink shirt. <laughs> no. It says right on it, too. It says, think, think green. Pink, think green. See, I don't know if it's because you're on the other side of the world, but your clock is back to front, and I couldn't read that. It's back to front. Well, Mark, that's the way we always do it here. Uh, everything's backwards. We play guitar backwards, everything. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, uh, yeah. the keyboard goes up to the left. Yeah. It's, it's actually just the reversal. I don't know how that worked. Uh, now, if I move to the right, it looks like I'm moving to my right, right? Oh, okay. Well, I don't know. You're getting a mirror image. No, you're not. That is weird. You're not getting your image. It should be. It should say seven twenty-four. It does, but the clock's back to front. It's going anti-clockwise. It, it might be something weird, weird going on between, between the southern, southern hemisphere and the northern hemisphere too. I didn't know. Is, is he reverse? Raise your right hand. This is my uh, now. I've got to work. Which is your right? Which is my right hand? Um, right. Find it. There it is. That looks normal. Okay. Yeah. This is and my right hand. You're right. On why are we reversed? You're coming across correctly. Why are we reversed? I don't know. So that your shirt's back to front. What's it supposed to say? Think green. Think green. Green. Yeah. See, it's back to front. I'm oh, sorry. See, I don't even know which way to turn because yeah. it's it's not like a mirror. This is one of those shirts that if you're in a bright sunny day and you fix your your gaze at the shirt and you leave it there for about twenty seconds and then you close your eyes, it turns green. Oh, inside, you know, inside your eyes. Oh, wow. You know, retina. That's wow. a funny thing. Yeah. <clears throat> Fantastic. Well, that's great. Programming it on your part that you're reversed. Yeah. No, I can't imagine why the clock would be backwards. Well, because it's reversed on our side. Yeah. Whatever. I'll give you an ex oh, Here's an example. If I hold up my watch. I hold up my watch. All right, it looks like it's about 9.22 p.m. So it's the right way around? Yeah. Oh, great. Oh, that's yeah, it is, it, I mean, it looks normal to me. That's weird then, isn't it? Mm. <laughs> well, we might have discovered some sort of new scientific thing that happens between northern and southern hemisphere people. <laughs> 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 Fantastic. So, um, I uh, did you get those those thoughts I had last night? I, I, didn't, didn't I get did. Them. I, I did. I emailed them to you. I didn't, didn't expect you just to get them. Um, I don't have them up in my screen right now, but.
but I did get them. What do you want to do? Well, did you like that idea about the, um, I just thought it's a very basic thing. People start getting coming into this experience and, and particularly if they have been immersed, <laughs> coffee. See what it says? No. Radio coffee. Radio coffee. Fantastic. That's brilliant. Fantastic. Look at that. Radio coffee. You came I've, been using, I've been using this cup for 20 years. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Mm. And it hasn't worn out. Now, you were saying uh, the people that are coming into this or people that are already in it, you know, uh, that have found out a lot. Yeah. If they get immersed, uh, or particularly if they get immersed, they they don't really understand, they don't realize, I don't think at the time, that they're actually inviting an entity to come and live inside them. It sounds spooky, but it, it's what? it's like that, you know. Uh, we've been taught that for years. Do you realize that you're inviting a spiritual being to come inside you and, yes. start, and start throwing things around? I mean, I know he's not forceful, it's our choice, but... Um, yes. And so new believers, they... I know if when we first got immersed, you'll do something wrong or you'll say something or you'll even think something and you blame the person who's teaching you or you blame the person who's next to you or you blame your wife or, you know, you blame because they did it where it wasn't. But it's not like that. It's what you're feeling inside you and you try to blame somebody else for your feeling. But mm -hmm. we understand now that that's, that's his flogging. He's getting us into line. His flogging, his discipline, his chastisement, um, all from Hebrews 12. Mm -hmm. in, in a very real way. And uh, yeah, and it, it's not difficult to see that that is a, a form of like what we call possession, mm. you know? Yeah. And uh, it's like your, your whole mind is being redone, a renewing of your mind and, uh, and going for someone else's will instead of following your own will. Oh, there's a lot of things to overcome, yeah. And the longer you do this, the, lo the longer you walk, the closer and closer and closer you become. And uh, I, I have a lot of things that I do that I never share with people, but uh, when, I, when I'm driving or when I'm talking to Yahusha, I actually, I tell him really simple little things like, you're my best friend, you know. And uh, it isn't because I'm thinking he's going to say, I never knew you. Yeah, that yeah. isn't why. It's because I want him to know, you know. Yeah. And uh, I know he knows, but I want him to hear me say it, you know. It's, it, it, those are just, and it sounds childish. And, but I still, you know, I, I think he likes the uh, innocence of uh, the child that lives in each of us. Hmm. Yeah. I miss that. So we have to remain childlike. Yeah. Yeah, totally. That's a that's a, yeah. yeah yeah wonderful. That's lovely. I got caught off guard. What 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 did you say, sister? <laughs> oh, she said that you have to enter the kingdom as a child. Yeah 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 wonderful. Yeah, that's lovely. I like that. Wonderful. Yeah. How's little Isabella? She's gorgeous. She turned uh, eight weeks yesterday. Oh, that's wonderful. Great. She's lovely. She um, sleeps most of the night. I think she has a feed at 10 o'clock, and then we don't really hear from her till about 5 or 6. Yeah, so she's a good sleeper. Oh. Uh, I was going to say, uh, with those photos that you sent of the children, were they, were they all dressed up for school, ready to go? Yes, yes. Yeah, that was such a precious thing. And the little, little Isabella was just laying there, you know, in their laps. Yeah, yeah. Amazing. So yeah, she's lovely. She's wonderful. We got our girl finally. So, yeah. Um, now what about that? See, that changes everything. It's like a different species completely. It's amazing. Yeah. I know. Uh, you see, I had two sons. I, of course, I was one of five boys, and I was the oldest. But uh, you know, I had no idea what a sister was like, and and then I I had two sons, and then we had. Two grand, uh, two, well, one grandson, and then the second grandchild was a, was a girl, and she's a lovely little girl, and then the third grandchild came, and it's another boy. So the boys will far out outweigh the girls, but yeah, yeah. In in some families, it goes the other way. Yeah, yeah. Oh wow. So what was it we were going to cover today? 
<laughs> I don't know. Um, I got that article uh, that Chris wrote, um, which just blew my brains out because I just thought that's what I've been experiencing. Um, yeah. And that real, I, I think people like to make things religious and complicated, but I think they need to understand the pain. The pain, if you go against, if you've got his spirit within you and you go against him, if you do mm -hmm. or say or think things that you shouldn't, um, it's pain. Uh, like it's, that's why they call it a flogging. It's not a, an outward mm -hmm. flogging. It's an inward flogging. I, I, I forget some of the analogies we used to use. Oh, that's right. We used to talk about the, uh, the shepherd with his goad and, and, uh, Chris would say to us, well, you know what a goad is, don't you? Yeah, it's, that it's a poker. It's a yeah, stick. It's a stick, and you get. It's a. It's a. It usually hooked at one end. In fact, the uh, what is it? The letter um, Gimel is. I think it goes. Or is it? Uh, see my brain in the morning. Uh oh, I'm disappearing in the sunshine. Yeah, you're disappearing. You got any blinds? I, <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna have to put some blinds up back there. Uh, wow. But um, anyway, the uh, the. Uh, Original Paleo Hebrew letter. Uh, let me let me look at my at my book here. I've got a copy of it here. Wait a minute. Maybe swing your screen around. Can you swing your screen around? Uh, I could move the camera. Yeah, yeah. And that way, maybe that would help. Um, oh, that's, the, that's better. Oh, yeah. Maybe if you turn We're having a tsunami here. Uh, it's an earthquake. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, the yeah, boat is rocking yeah. now. Oh. Anyway, um, let me see. Okay, now this is also the microphone. Yeah. The little camera. Yeah. That's better. Yeah. Oh, I have to tilt it up a little bit. Man, I look like I'm a giant. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Uh, I was looking at my book here where I've got the uh, fossilized, the fossilized customs book. Yes. Now, does that look backwards? Yes, but uh, where can you get that, brother? Well, you can get one printed in English with the letters going the right way. Yes. From uh, torazone.net. And uh, anyway, the um, Hebrew letter in the Paleo Hebrew, the third letter, Gimel, is actually, the, well, wait a minute. See, no, it's not. It's the Lamed. I knew that. Man, it's seven a.m. It's just not fair. Anyway, <laughs> my brain is not work right. Anyway, the Lamed, which is like our letter L, is the is the goad, and that goad is the letter Lamed, and it looks like a little hook, and they poke the goats and sheep and little critters with that thing. I suppose even large animals, you know. Yeah. But it's a shepherd's main tool for corralling and moving their animals. They poke them in their hind quarters. Yeah. Yeah. So we've all you felt know. that poking. <laughs> yeah, we feel that poking. Yeah, we do. Yeah, I, I used to say it was like a um like a guitar string in my head. It just kept getting tighter and tighter and tighter and I and I go, No, that's not fair. I didn't I didn't mean it when I said that. I didn't mean it like that, and it would get tired. Right. Away. Well, yeah. It's just because the old nature is there, you know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The, the old nature, uh, you know, is out of tune with the. I, it, this is a terrible microphone. Okay. Well, anyway. Uh, <laughs> you said guitar. I couldn't help it. Yeah. I keep it there just in case uh, I get a moment while I'm waiting for something. Uh, so you know how slow computers are. Yeah. And uh, it just takes forever for something. And, uh, you know, so I grab my guitar and play a few chords and, you know, and it kind of reboots me, you know, yeah. just yeah. for a few seconds. Ah. I was copying some DVDs just before you called. Uh, they're back there in the corner now. Yeah. So you say the book was print was printing printed backwards? Yeah. Oh boy. That's strange, isn't well, it? Well at least we're not upside down. Yeah, that's a good yeah. thing. Well, have a wonderful thing. Uh, oh well, yeah. I'll start um I'll start going okay. through some of this and see where it takes us, eh? Okay. Alright. Uh, here we go. Um, 
Hey, hey, brothers and sisters, welcome to Torah Talk, and uh, I'm Mark Davidson, and I'm joined via Skype by Mr. Customized Fossil himself, Lou White. Hello. <laughs> How are you, brother? I'm fine, brother. How are you? Very Feeling good. good. Very good. We're here in our second show now. Mm -hmm. Yes, we are. And uh, are we going to tell them our little secret about you know, what we'd like people to listen for. You know, back in, uh, it, it was, uh, I think Dr. Luke recorded Yahusha's words and he said uh, something like, be careful how you listen or how you hear, you know, and he's, uh, you know, we have to be careful, not only who we listen to, but how we listen, because if we listen lawlessly, uh, you know, with an ear for excuses and, you know, ways of getting around things, uh, you know, like, you know, the Constitution or or the Torah. <laughs> you know, if we were to try to skirt the law just a little, and, and if we hear things and we're waiting to hear for a way to get around things, uh, that's how we can trick ourselves into being outside the will of our Creator, Yahuwah. So I'm thinking uh, we ought to let him in on our little secret. Last week, our first show, there were two errors that were not so glaring, but some people who were listening closely might have heard them. In one of the statements, I said that there was a mistranslation. Actually, it should have been a transliteration of the word Passover or Passover. And I said it was in Acts twelve four. I mean, for, uh, Acts four twelve. When it isn't, Acts four twelve is another familiar text that there's only one name given under heaven uh, among men by which we must be saved. But in, uh, in Acts 12, 4, we have a mistranslated word in the King James Version. The word Pesach is used some 20 some times, and it's translated uh, Passover. But in that one case, they translated it into a pagan deity's name, E-A-S-T-E-R. That was an error, and I want our listeners to try to, try to find the error so that we can um, make this better. Yeah. Uh, also, I also mentioned that um, William Tyndale was the first one to translate into English, and that's mm -hmm. not true. It was John Wycliffe who finished his translation over 150 years before that, and uh, so we want to make sure that our listeners are not uh, thinking that we don't even know that. But uh, anyway, if we if we mess up, we want you to tell us, you know. And we might do some messing up on purpose. So we want you to try to find it. Totally. I, I knew that last week. I was going to say something, but I just thought I'd flow with it. So. Oh, when, <laughs> when I said <laughs> Acts 412. <laughs> it's because it's 7 a.m. here, and I'm uh, still re drinking my radio coffee. Yep. <laughs> See? See those uh, lightning bolts? Yep. Yeah, that's serious. Very fit. That's, ex that's espresso. Yep. <laughs> Fantastic. So, brother, new people are coming in all the time, and they're reading your book, uh, and they're reading the Torah, most importantly, but alongside the Torah, they're often reading your book. We tell people, look, get yourself some scriptures, preferably the ones with the real name in it, and get yourself a fossilized custom. Definitely get one of those, because it just it unravels, slowly unravels, and people say, oh, but the writing's so small, and I said, well, just read a page at a time, you know? <laughs> And, uh, and they say, oh, we feel sick after one page. Well, yep, that's right. That's right. Yeah. So it's, it's heartbreaking. Yeah, yeah it's, it's horrible. And sometimes it takes a while to get through. So uh, when people do take that step, and we'll talk about repentance and immersion and things maybe later or in another show, but when people do come into uh, Israel or become a Nazarene, um, there's a transformation process I think they need to understand. And uh, our brother in... Um, Far North Queensland, Chris Hilton has written this uh, article which has gone in the newspaper and I hope it shakes a lot of people, particularly in religion. Um, and it's all about goading and flogging and the, the chastisement, the discipline of Yahuwah. And it, it's based on Hebrews 12. And um, so I thought I would start just by going through that a little bit and see, oh, what, you, okay. see what Yahushua tells us about it. Because you found that too, haven't you, brother, over the years, that, that his hand is very real if you go against him. Not that we want to go against him, but when we're younger and more immature, we we often don't know our conscience is changing. Our, our, our conscience 
things that we thought were okay before, um, we find this pain, you know, why am I getting this pain? Because mm. yeah, it was, we're not talking love, we're not doing the right thing, you know. If you feel oh like yeah, there's a big difference after say 10, 15, 20 years of walking with him that you can see his side of things much, much more readily. But like you were saying, when you're immersed, you're inviting another another person to come and possess you, to, to live inside you. And it's and, not uh, a, it's not a trinity, is it? Well, no, it is not. It's uh it's it's one being, but you know, Yahuwah is a spirit, and when when we have a joining with our spirit, with his spirit, and then we have a, a another person on the other side of the earth. That is at that very same moment in the same mind with that same spirit that possesses both of them, then there's something that is a, clo a closer bond than you can even imagine. Because, <clears throat> you know, in a family, especially, that's why you have so many tragic situations going on where a, a man or a woman has Yahusha living in them and the other does not, and the other one despises the thing that's. In them, I think it's a jealousy, you know, and uh, I don't know exactly what it all is, but uh, there's something going on that they're not one anymore. And uh, but when they find, even if it takes years and years and years, it's worth it. And so I heard on the radio, another radio station actually, uh, where this person was praying for someone for 17 years, and people have told me that I've been praying for several people. Uh, you know, for a long, long time, every bit of 17 years, if not longer. <clears throat> and, you know, they haven't changed. They're still in the same place. But I pray, and I pray, and I pray, uh, asking you who should have sent them a dream or a vision or something to open their hearts. Anyway, uh, it gives me hope to hear that there are success stories out there, you know. Well, while, we're, while you're talking about prayer, I found that I find that topic very interesting because, and I know you've done a seminar on it, but we haven't, you know, received it yet. But um, mm -hmm. it's um, coming out of Christianity where and we were very full on in our Christian walk. We were getting up, prayer always to me means getting up early, <laughs> and mm -hmm. and and that's what I came out of Christianity mm -hmm. with. It was prayer means getting up early and putting in a lot of effort. And so when we came out of Christianity, we're done with the prayer, <laughs> we're done with the, the services, we're done with all the religious stuff. But as we come into Yahusha and we've read articles that you've written about prayer and it's a personal relationship and it's just prayer is just communication. What I wanted to ask you, what prayer really is to you? Is, that, is, it, um, is it more of a burden? Is that what prayer is? Or is it talking to Yahusha? Do you set, a, set aside time? Uh, to have you know prayer time or things like that or group prayer time or is prayer purely to you when when someone comes to you uh, in your mind and you, and you you think about them you offer them to you who sure what is prayer to you brother what does it mean for, for for those of us who've come out of religion and and it's got a totally different aspect it's totally pious and hot air mm -hmm. what is in religious, religious yeah. yeah well I feel like it's a child talking to his parent that's my perspective of it because you know my first experience and my first memory with prayer was I was in my and I'm going back into my deepest memory when I was a really young boy and I was in school and I had to attend these Catholic schools where the nuns were dressed up like sort of like druids or wish witches and I uh, didn't understand any of that but I was so frightened by this stuff and concerned that I went into the basement where my family, I had, you know, other children with me, but, uh, you know, other brothers, but I uh, went down there for privacy and I just stopped in the semi-darkness and I talked to the father. I didn't know his name. And I uh, just talked to him as being a real child, saying, I don't know what your name is. And I remember mentioning something like that, but I know you exist. And I, I don't know what's going on at that school that I go to, but it doesn't look right. There's something very wrong. Uh, 
And uh, I just talked to him as a child, and I said, "I, I trust you, and I'm gonna, and I know you're there because I, I felt his hand on me. You know, he was already, I think, inside me, and uh, I just basically went through it, drifted through the years, hearing things and seeing things, and hoping, and I, and going through the motions, which uh, I have to say I learned how to genuflect, which is a, an abomination to do, you know, to objects. And I didn't know this, and I learned the sacraments, and I tried to understand what they meant. And anyway, he kept my mind from being completely overcome. And I was always suspicious about everything, because I wanted to know what the background of everything was. And that's why I think I'm the author of this book. You know, I just kept all these things in my heart, wanting to know the secrets that lie that lie behind everyone, everything, and where they started, and what the motivation was. N- not just history, but to find out why it occurred. So anyway, a prayer, I think, was something that I learned very early, and it was just a relationship with him that he's been guiding me through. And when you communicate with the one that you learn to love, uh, because you realize he's superior. He's not your servant. He's not. He's not a genie. He. He. You do his will. You know, and carry out his wishes. And some years later, I remember sitting at a desk, and I was in I think the eighth grade in in this high in this school, and I was about to graduate to go to high school, and I was praying to him, and I said, I will. I would like to become a priest for you. You know. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> I didn't know what I was saying, but I didn't know the scope of what that would require. But I pictured myself as a Roman Catholic priest, and I was just a young boy in the eighth grade. And uh, he made sure that that did not happen. But he did make me a priest. Yeah, hallelujah. And that is so amazing. So anyway, I, I, kept, I vowed to him. I said, I will become a priest. But I didn't know that it was going to be a real priest, not one of those uh, warlock frauds, but, uh, you know, I'm sorry to call them that, but they're, they're deceived people, you know, and we're here to help break the stronghold that's, that's over them. The idea that there's sacraments and that they have to uh, administer these sacraments, it's, it's just nonsense. They don't exist. They're not real. And um, anyway, prayer was something that I was always doing and didn't have any training in it. It's just communicate. It's talking to Yahusha. That's what it is. It's just talking just like we're doing, you know, not trying to win an argument, not trying to debate, just trying to work through things, you know, just like you do every, with anybody, you, anyone that you speak with, you're just uh, being a, a friend, you know. But uh, of course, uh, lately I've been, uh, c- going back to my roots <laughs> and becoming more like that little child and uh, just telling Yahushua that he is my best friend. And I then I say, well, my wife is my second best friend. You know, so, you know, you put him uh, in the highest position and everything else will, will flow, you know, correctly. And uh, that's why he, I think he, Yahushua said, let, uh, if anyone would come after me, let him deny himself. All right, now that, that's the first step, see, and we kind of touched on that a little last week, or last month, when we, I mean, yeah, it was last week. <clears throat> it was last month, too, if you want to use the Roman thing. But well, either one, I mean, the real moon did change. Anyway, last month and last week, uh, we, we touched on that, that... You know, uh, you have to deny yourself and overcome. You asked me, how do you overcome? The main obstacle in overcoming is yourself. Because, see, we deify ourselves. We think we're the ones that have to call all the shots. And we have to have our desires fulfilled. But when we're fulfilling his desires first, he lays everything out for you. All the doors open, all the lights turn green, so to speak. And he equips you. He will not tell you to do something and then not not equip you for the task. You know, he'll give you the 
the tools in your toolbox to accomplish it. If you're an air, an air conditioning repairman, you're not going to have the tools of an auto mechanic. You know, and that's why we can't look at one another and say, well, you know, your tools that you're using and the task that you're on is is far off. I'm, you have to be doing what I'm doing. Well, that's not true. You see, I'm doing some scary things. I have to talk to witches. Of course, people don't realize it, but they may work in a nice, clean, happy little place. But there's witches and warlocks that work with them. There's atheists. There's people going into the lake of fire all around them. And if they and I and I know it where I work, <laughs> and I'm very sensitive. I'm very conscious of it. And that's why I uh, see everyone as being the same. I could walk out of a building where I work and walk into another building. The very same people are there. You know, they're doing the same things, thinking the same things. So, you know, we can't start looking at one another and saying, well, you're a air conditioning repairman and I'm a mechanic. You need to learn how to, you know. Uh, I mean, uh, an auto mechanic or whatever. Your toolbox ha has to be different because you're equipped with certain spiritual gifts. And they're not yours. They're not for you. They're to serve the body, you know. Yeah. Yeah. And that's why when, you know, if ever the day comes and I meet someone that I had an effect on, then I'll say, what? That's great. And then little little children will come up and say, my dad or my mom learn something that was very important and it affected my life too. Yeah. You know, these things go on for generations. That's the same thing that's happened to all of us. We've been subjected to these lies about, for example, the day, you know, the Sabbath is no longer the Sabbath. It's uh, the first day of the week. Uh, see, those are lies that started a long, long time ago. And there's generations that have inherited these lies. And now during the time of restoration, but just before Yahushua returns, there's a restoration of all these truths. And we're not trying to be hateful at all. We're just saying, well, it's different from what you've been taught. But what you have to rely on is the is what's real and what's true. And not this religious stuff, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Does that make any sense? Oh, totally. Sense. Prayer, but you know, prayer is 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 the is the core. It's the it's the dynamo, it's the energy source. Because when you're connected with, you know, the creator of the universe in your heart, and he lives inside you, then you have an unbelievable source and resource of all knowledge, and he can reach out through you in love to make almost anything happen at any, at any time. He could use you for healing. He could use you for prophecy. He could snatch someone who's on the brink of committing suicide and you didn't even know it but he gives you the right words to say and the people may you you may never know until in the world to come yeah are you finding a lot of those spiritual have you are you seeing a lot of those spiritual gifts around uh not so much around yourself but i do you know of people or hear of Nazarim who are experiencing those sort of things or healing or d demonic getting rid of demons or, you know, do you hear much? Well, you know, that's uh, interesting. Some people may need that for uh, showing themselves up as evidences, but uh, the things that the prophets have done beforehand that are recorded for us and the things that were, that were done by the early disciples of Yahushua were for our uh, evidences for his action in the world. And I think that, Anymore, we're generally not needing to to see and hear things like that because those are those are signs and wonders. Both, you know, for I mean, you know, he can give you good signs and good wonders to do. But uh, if we need those sorts of things, then you know, he called that a wicked generation that needs that sort of thing. But uh, I don't put my ear to the ground or look for evidence or anything like that, like I would like. A, the latest UFO news or anything, you know. Uh, if I'm looking for information to shore up my own faith, uh, then there might be some basic problem with inside me. But at the same time, when I hear about something that might happen, in a, like for example with Felicia, uh, the girl that was hit by the truck, 
that was a miracle. There's no doubt. Uh, did you hear about the accident? Yeah. And these sorts of things are happening all the time. And that family was protected. But uh, there was something that Yahushua wanted to do. And it may yet still have something else ahead. But, you know, these are, the, I mean, if you wanted to ask me what, what the most recent thing was, that in my experience, uh, what happened to Danny McGuire and Linda McGuire's daughter, Felicia, was certainly a miracle, you know. But we aren't running up and down the street in my neighborhood telling people, hey, you know, you've got to believe uh, because look at this evidence. Because that's not the way it works. They wouldn't, they wouldn't, that wouldn't convince people anyway, would it? No, it wouldn't. In fact, I've, I've talked to witches that, and atheists, of course, uh, that if I, if I had the ability to know when the sun was going to turn off and then to come back on like a light, if I, if I did that, would that convince you? And they, and they would tell me, no way. I wouldn't believe it at all. If you gave me a five second countdown and the sun went out, which is really bright, by the way, right now. It's coming in. And uh, they said that they would not believe it even then, you know. And, you know, Yahushua knows their hearts. He said, you know, even if a man was brought back from the dead, uh, they wouldn't believe it, you know. Because people go to psychic readings to find out that stuff anyway. And a lot of the time it's true. Mm -hmm. A lot of clients and staff and all sorts of people say, oh, my mother got there. Their, their, their cells read or they and the psychic said this was going to happen and it happened I said well of course it's going to happen nobody is denying that what they're hearing is true I'm just, <laughs> I'm, I'm just telling you who it is that's telling them because <laughs> demons know stuff as well yeah. you know well they live in the same world we do they're all over, all around us constantly and uh, the, but you see they're, all, they're outnumbered two to one and they've got, we've got Yahushua on our side too yeah. The demons were created beings, and uh, they, you know, they ha they are on, le on a leash. They can't do whatever they want. No. But uh, given permission, or not having any protection, you know, that a person is very vulnerable. Yeah. Yeah. So that's why I pray every day for certain people that are not saved and not not believers, because they are unprotected. They're completely naked to these demons and. You know, they can have any, any number of ways. And that would get have a way of getting back to me, too, because if they attack my unbelieving parts of my family, you know, like my parents right now, they're, uh, they're in Catholicism heavily, praying rosaries and, and taking uh, and bowing down before bread. You know, you, <laughs> it's really tough when you're in your 80s and, you know, you're doing that sort of thing. And then you're... I, I try to explain it to them, and they say, well, maybe I'm just too old to change, you know. No, I, it, there's no way that you're too old to change. The truth is always a wonderful thing. Uh, it's not bitter in your heart. The truth is clean and pure, and it washes you of all these errors. Um, and that's what we really need to pray, is each one of us should pray that the inside of our hearts would be washed and sprinkled by the blood of Yahushua constantly so that we would be completely pure in his sight. And if we're clean on the inside of our vessel, the heart, the spiritual side, then what's on the outside of the vessel will also be clean because it's what comes out of the heart that defiles a man. And it also is evidence of what's in that man, the things that come out of that man. Of course, some of those people are saying that uh, <laughs> there's some evil, vile stuff coming out of that man, Lou White. <laughs> well, if only they knew me personally, they could follow me around with a camera every day and see what I say to people and the discussions that I have. Because, you know, it's, it's not physical objects. It's not little things like this that are the problem, uh, whatever their shape is. <laughs> it's, or look at this thing. Huh? What in the world is that? Oh, <laughs> oh boy. Was that it, a it, it, is that a lightsaber? Yeah, it, it, it doesn't make any sense to, to say that. Oh, you all know what this is. <laughs> the clan hole. Yeah, it is. <laughs> okay. I scared Phyllis. Sorry. She's in the room over here with me. Anyway, 
it's not that it's not objects it's the hearts of men that's where we have to have to work and that's the field that we're in the, the the harvest field and we're workers in the harvest and we're sowing seed and we're not sowing seed on sidewalks and driveways and roadways we're sowing it in people's hearts that's where we're planting the seeds and uh, that's where I plant the seeds I I talk to people and I look for opportunities to you know I, I, I look at them and I and I and I can see that they're into something and uh, there's little cues that you can see you know with people they wear necklaces or have a particular tattoo and I'll oh yeah you know what that too that tattoo means don't you and they say yes I know what it means to me <laughs> because it's very important to them and so I strike up a conversation over, over anything or they strike up a conversation they say well what's that thing on your uh, shirt there oh that's a symbol yeah what's that mean oh those are letters or you know that's the name of the creator that's how he wrote his own name and in the stone tablets and uh, you know they they're very some of them are going well isn't that nice but then some people are very drawn to that because see their hearts are being prepared prepared to receive the seed beforehand you know it might take years so you wear those um, funky shirts with the with the, the palaya on it to work yeah, well, that has that has happened on occasion. When when I reach into the closet and get dressed, sometimes uh, stumbling in the darkness of my closet, I, <laughs> I accidentally <laughs> put on one of those shirts and uh, wander out into the world. And then uh, I'll be in a I'll be walk. You never know when it's going to happen. Phyllis and I were walking into a grocery store last Yom Shishi, and that's a Yom Shishi. Oh boy. What's that? What? Yom Shishi? What? What's that? What in the world? Yom Shishi is, even my partner Bob, the unbelieving Bob right now, knows what Yom Shishi is. Yom means day. Is that his Indian name? Oh, it could be, yeah. Oh, it's Hebrew. It's Hebrew. Yom means day, and Shishi is the word for six, so you're, seeing, you're on your sixth day. That's preparation day before the Sabbath. Phyllis and I were walking in the grocery, and th this lady... We momentarily pause to look at these flowers, you know, because, you know, husbands have to act like they're interested in flowers. <laughs> and, oh, isn't that beautiful? Look at that color. And you see uh, pink is and purple and things like that are uh, colors that make girls of all ages feel uh, their hearts just leap with joy when they see that color. And that's what it really is. It's that simple. They just love that color because it's it, it makes their hearts leap with joy. Yeah. And so uh, it, it doesn't do that for me, but, uh, you know, I like other colors. I like blues and greens. Anyway, the uh, fact is this woman comes up, and she looked like she was in her 50s, a very kind, quiet spirit. And she comes up to us and while well, we're looking at the flowers. And, uh, of course, I love flowers. That's not a problem. But, uh, you know, even real men like flowers. Oh, that, that it, Lou White hates flowers. Oh, they're, they're yeah, like, that's part of his problem. Anyway, uh, right into tour yeah. talk with the complaints. <laughs> but anyway, she says, uh, I, I wanted to ask you, was that uh, license plate on the back of your car, was that the name of the creator? And I said, yes, it is. And I gave her a card one of our not serene cards for our seminars and I said you should come and study with us sometime and you know and I told her it was interactive you know you can come and share uh, ask questions you know where it's not like uh, most people are used to uh, if somebody doesn't agree or doesn't understand they can stop and say just hold up their hand or just yell out and go wait a minute we don't pass let's, the plate let's do this Let's stop and I have to ask you, what is that thing right there or that symbol or what? Let's slow down, you know. And uh, that's fine because, see, there's all kinds of different levels. People that are coming in with a certain amount of ground knowledge or none at all. And then there's some people who have a little bit more and maybe they're coming from some other angle like the Jehovah Witnesses or Mormons and Catholics and Baptists. And, you know, so it's really nice to be able to stop and 
everyone in the whole room can actually, you know, experience someone else's point of view coming from some really strange stronghold, you know, and everybody understands, well, not everybody understands strongholds. Uh, we're still fighting with that too, going, what is a stronghold and how do, how do we detect them when they're in our lives? It's like trying to debug a computer of viruses. <laughs> yep. You know, and uh, we're, we have strongholds in our own minds at all times. They're just, you know, they surface sometimes and they, and, and then you go, aha, I gotcha. And then you can clean that, that little stronghold out. So the Torah is the uh, antivirus protection, is it? Or? Is it? Yeah, that's a good point. The Torah is antivirus protection from strongholds. Yeah, the more you read it, the more you're uh, immune. Deep, uh, yeah. Yeah, you're all your, uh, you know, there were 12 risks found. And <laughs> that was a risk. That sacrament thing. Oh, no. And the Sabbath. A lot of people have to get in on the ground floor, and uh, we still deal with those things. But, uh, you know, when we're, you know, we've talked about prayer today. We've talked about what well, we haven't talked about immersion. Yeah. You know, and like you were saying, immersion is inviting another entity, another spirit being to come and live with you in your heart. Yeah. Wow. I hadn't, I hadn't actually looked at it quite well. Maybe I have. But because uh, that's the way it really is. You know? well, the, the Father and the Son come and live within us, don't they? Yes, they do. And uh, we have a, uh, you know, a bond, you know, that uh, will never, ever go away. That's the, that's the security that you really feel is the, uh, the idea that once you've invited Yahusha into, to come and live in your heart, you have a, well, he, he kept saying it, like in the book of what they call Joshua, or Yahusha, uh, in chapter 1, I think it is, that, you know, he'll never leave us or forsake us. Uh, he's with us always. You know, you, you know, be strong and be courageous. And, I, and, 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 and I, he's going to be with us all, all through time. There's not going to be a, a day that he's not going to be watching over us and protecting us uh, from whatever. And... Uh, so we can be strong and courageous. We just hopefully won't be, uh, uh, what do you call it, uh, belligerent and and uh, unkind. You know, we, we don't have to be that way. Uh, we can be secure and walk as a lion. And wherever the sole of our foot let rests, that that belongs to us because we're children of the, of the king. We're uh, we're not inheriting so much the universe we are but we're inheriting our inheritance is him yeah because uh th that relationship is on our wildest imaginations wow isn't that amazing yes it is and that's why we can't help but pray you know and speak to him and tell him you are my best friend and I, I think about how Abraham was, uh, you know, his his friend, and that's uh, that's an amazing thing. And you know, when Yahusha said that to his disciples, he said, "I no longer call you servants, but I call you my friends." You know, and uh, that's what we are. You know, and you have to be careful because. The enemy is always in our heads trying to tell us that we're not. And and you're not good enough. You're not. And often it's strongholds from where we've come from, how we've been brought up. You, you're you not praying enough. You're not reading enough. You're not, I'm not, you know, well, if you're not reading at all, obviously you're not reading enough. But even if you were, even if you were, um, always at you trying to make, and for young believers that may not understand that, there's always a negative coming at you all the time and that's why scripture tells us to arrest every thought isn't it check it with the word so so we know because mm -hmm. the Yahushua doesn't talk to us like that I mean we will feel the pressure and we'll feel his chastisement but he, yeah. he, he says my words are to uplift you and to give you hope and peace and a future and you know my thoughts to you are as many as the grain of sand on the ocean um, he's not heavy like that is he mm -hmm. 
Yeah, and, but you know, he does. Uh, he does give us enough to know he's there, and you know, it's uh, sometimes people feel abandoned, but it's something that they're going through, and maybe it's a personal mental fortress that they've trapped themselves in. But I think that uh, you know, when we go through terrible times, it's not because he's not with us; he is with us when we're in the worst place that we've ever been in our lives. He's closer to us then than than we can possibly imagine. And he and he goes through it with us, you know. But uh, well, that's that's wonderful to just let people know that. I mean, because people's lives are <clears throat> people's lives are chaotic and they're hectic. And oh, I don't have time to read all that. And I don't have the time to pray. And for people to understand that prayer is just the relationship they're having with Yahusha is just. Mm -hmm. That can break down strongholds, I think, to know that you are communicating with Yahushua. If you're immersed and he's inside you and you're communicating with him, that's prayer. You don't mm -hmm. have to go, you don't have to go on your knees and whip yourself every morning and you know mm -hmm. and do all the Well, you know, uh, the way you know his will though is to first and foremost study his tour his covenant. Look at the covenant itself. Keep looking at the at the Ten Commandments and rehearse them and and remind them of. Uh, keep going over in your mind when you're driving. Just say, well, number one, and uh, number two, and number three, and get them in order so that our order, the orderliness of it, will be a pattern. And that's what he wants us to do: is renew our minds. And that sort of catechetical approach is fine. It's. Uh, it's, I mean, in the sense that it's instruction. That's what catech catechetical means. It means an instructive thing. Uh, that's just the Latin way of putting it. But you see the uh, instructions, that's what the Torah is, instruction. And when we don't do meditate in his word, which is those that covenant, those ten words, then uh, we'll not ever understand his will for us or everyone else for that matter. Uh, but uh, that's the, the foundation. That's what we have to build our house on uh, in our relationship. See, because it's a relationship. That's what the covenant is. It's a marriage. And that uh, bond, and that as, as his bride, we have to obey our husband. And our husband is on record saying, these are my commandments, and you are to walk in them, and you are to teach them diligently to your children, and Speak of them when you rise up or when you lie down and when you go in and go out and walk along the road, sit in your house. So, you know, he's not kidding. He, he wants us to write them on the doorposts of our house and on our gates. The doorposts, that's more than one doorpost <laughs> and the gates. Um, and he doesn't, he's not kidding. He, he, and that's, of course, by writing them on the doorposts of our house, we're also uh, aware of the doorposts of our heart he's put them there too and the blood of the messiah is on those doorposts you know the this the wounds of the messiah were uh the emblems uh, that were being put on the doorposts in in the in mitzrayim or egypt when the children of israel were there so uh yeah we have to keep those ever present in our minds so we don't go writing them physically on every single doorpost, do we? It's our heart, isn't it? Well, actually, it's both. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I, uh, I recommended to people many, many years ago to print out either one commandment or all ten and take little strips and put them on the doorpost with some glue stick because it's it comes off. It, it doesn't damage the paint. Oh, fantastic. Uh, on the doorpost. And uh, on the inside of the home. And what I did with my children when they were young, I put one commandment on each doorpost, a different commandment. For example, uh, honor your father and your mother would be one that would be on my oldest son's room. And then uh, you do not break wedlock was on my bedroom. <laughs> you know, there were different doorposts. And uh, you do not murder was on another doorpost. And, you do not steal was on another doorpost. You know, I, that's where we kept all the gold. Yeah. <laughs> uh, no, I'm kidding. I don't know if I even have any gold. <laughs> yeah. But uh, yeah. anyway, the, uh, yeah, the commandments are, I, I always teach uh, the, the literal as well as the figurative. Because see the, you know, 
there's two levels as we uh, talk about in the seminars to the Hebrew concepts and the words that uh, there's a physical and then there's a there's a figurative and of course we should do both because one is pointing to the other you know if you just look at what the thing at the finger and not not see what the finger is pointing to then you haven't really gotten the point you know so writing them on your heart has to start with the physical you know so uh, do you have them up on your doorpost there I don't. <laughs> no, I don't. No, that's what I'm going to now. now. I've got, I've got it over here, uh, right, right next to the front door. Yeah. Uh, it's, uh, right next to the front door there. Yeah. Can't see it. I can't reach. Uh, this camera will go over there. Yeah. But uh, you know, this room, I don't have them in this room, and I need to do that. It's an ongoing process. Uh, I'm going to have to uh, put them on this in this room. Yeah. Well, I've got indications in here, but you know, on the front door, right next to it, I've got a, I've got the study chart, and I've got the Ten Commandments up there. The covenant is right there. So, oh no, there they are on the doorpost too. I've got a big one and a little one. Okay, so right here within my uh, gaze here, just ten feet away, I've got a, a little thing with all Ten Commandments written there, and then I've got a big study chart too. Yeah, you know, of course that. Do you sell those? Do you sell those? Or? Oh, I more, more often than not give those away. Oh. If anyone asks for the Ten Commandments, and I have them in my possession, oh boy, I'm not going to wait for money. I'm going to give them to them. Yeah. Uh, yeah. If somebody's excitedly uh, interested in having it, um, I I have those study charts. Uh, I don't know if I've got any left, but I had some rolled up over there at that evil store. Yeah. And. They're all, they all, they all disappeared. I don't know where they went. People walked off with them. Is that the um, the gold colored one with the, the the stone on it? The lost lost where was it? Lost Lunas. exactly lost lost Lunos stone. That's what they call it. It's in Los Lunas, New Mexico, near the Rio Grande River, near the border. Uh, and see, at one time sea level was lower, and at one time sea level was much much higher. Like 2,500 plus years ago, sea level was really high. And the, and the Rio Grande, which is uh, along the southern border of the United States, was deep enough for ocean-going ships. And evidently, one of these Israelite ships that could carry four, five, six hundred people, I mean, they're huge. They were huge ships. They could actually navigate as far up as that area. And that area that we know of as New Mexico right now is real close to the Rio Grande and that ship with all those Israelites on it no doubt uh, for mining purposes and so forth they uh, they had a settlement there and they had written the commandments on a huge stone there and they it served probably as the city gate or the or the camp gate so he's they did they did it literally they put the commandments on the gates, and uh, that's why. So they were obeying. Not that we're we're imitating so much what people do, but what Yahuwah told us to do, even though they they were doing it correctly. So uh, if somebody wants to put something on their right hand, like it says, you know, it says to bind them on your right hand, and and uh, you know, place them on your uh, forehead. If they want to literally do that, I'm not going to tell them not to, you know. But um, it would be a it would be important that they get in their in their hearts, though. That's where they really belong. So, brothers and sisters, we have some uh, more homework this week to get the commandments on our doorposts. Exactly. What a what a novel idea. <laughs> Last week we read Maybe. Psalms, and this week we got a. But put them on our doorposts of our homes and on our gates. That's wonderful. I'm going to do that. Teach I love it. it. And uh, it's in, if anybody wants the evidence for that, it's in Deuteronomy or Debarim, chapter 6. That's where you can look that, that commandment, that order. Up in the, but, you know, don't, don't, don't forget to read Deuteronomy chapter 5, you know, because that's, that is the commandments. And then chapter 6, he's saying, you know, 
by the way, these commandments are to be in your heart, and you are to write them on your doorpost and on your gates, and teach them diligently to your children. So. Oh, that's wonderful. Yeah. Well, that's that's great. I'm really happy about that. It's it's figurative and it's literal. Yes, it is, and it's uh, either way, it's Torah talk. Yes. <laughs> That's the name of the radio show. That's right. It's wonderful. What else? What that else is there to talk about? Oh yeah. I mean, that's more important. Uh uh. That, that's the thing, you know. Fantastic. Well, brothers and sisters, that time has flown once again, and uh, we we just love you. We just love chatting about Yahusha and about His Word. Uh, it's more precious than gold, isn't it? Oh yes, it is. That's great. Yeah, that was. Are we uh, pretty much finished then? Yeah, yeah. Got enough we, material. Yeah, we've been well, I really, uh, I was very impressed with the, uh, you know, the, the the topics that we discussed last time too. Yeah, and sure. um, it just flowed, didn't it? I I was freaked out last week. I didn't, you know. Oh, don't don't be. Yeah. Oh, the first time's always the hardest. You know, I've always taught my my children uh, the hardest thing that there is to do in the whole world is just to get started. And once you've gotten started, uh, it doesn't, it flows. Yeah. You know, the job is not hard. That, you know, nuclear propulsion might be, but <laughs> once you get started, it it's okay. Oh, that's wonderful. Yeah. Fantastic. Well, I know it's really late for you. You've got to get back to those five beautiful children. Yeah. Well, they're all asleep finally. So. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I might get something to eat. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, you haven't had anything to eat yet? Not yet. I don't don't overeat because the late night eating, uh, you know. Yeah. So we'll meet you here again next week. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. We will indeed. Okay. Well, we love you. We love you, brother. Yep. You too. Have and a great we'll, day. I pray for you constantly. You know. So we'll we'll talk, we'll talk to you soon. I wanted to ask you: Are you? Uh, did you mail a, a copy of the DVD of the? Uh, what was that last one? Image of the Beast. The Image of the Beast. Yes, it the, should. Uh, that would have been over a week or two now. It should be there any day. Great, great. I, because you know, I'd love to be able to make some copies of that. It's really, uh, you said, really taken off on the hits. Yeah. You yeah. Know, yes, was, that's was, right. Yeah, it's way up there. It's what the, it's going. It's going viral. <laughs> it's going viral. Yeah, it's amazing. Okay. Well, I'll let you go. I don't want to keep you. Yeah, wonderful. So. Thanks, brother. See you later. Thank you. See you later. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.